Okay, military installations report. And presentation from Peterson. First, I'll say good morning. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, uh, to provide an update from Peterson Air Force Base. Lead off with uh, regrets from Colonel Chess. Uh, he does indeed wish he could be here. Uh, he is uh, currently uh, serving other duties in California as he visits our uh, GSUs, uh, geographically separated units, and uh, performs his duties uh, around the globe. Um, also say that I uh, appreciate the continued uh, community support uh, as we work through the PFOS and PFOA uh, issues. Uh, we do indeed see this as our community. Uh, it is not the community. It is not your community. It is our community. Uh, we have uh, upwards of 10,000 people that work on Peterson Air Force Base every day. I have uh, 600 plus houses on the installation which means that uh, over 9,000 of our uh, airmen, uh, contractors, and government civilians live in our community. Uh, we take our responsibility to that community seriously, and we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to uh, protect uh, the citizens. Uh, that said, our objective is to uh, uh, respond quickly to any risks that are out there, uh, and then uh, um, take a look at what we can do to get the situation right. Uh, I'll talk uh, briefly to uh, uh, not only the, um, the thought that we released uh, PFOS and PFOA water into the sewer, but also talk to the more strategic uh, effort uh, to, uh, uh, again, get right uh, the potential contamination of uh, groundwater and, uh, and uh, drinking water. Uh, in light of that, under the umbrella of transparency, uh, that's what our goal is. So with the, uh, with the discharge or the, uh, the potential discharge, uh, what we had happen is um, back in August, we determined that this firefighting system that we have on base was indeed contaminated with PFOS and PFOA. We immediately responded by saying, we are no longer going to discharge water into the Colorado Springs Utility sewer system as had been our uh, procedures. Part of those procedures uh, were to notify Colorado Springs Utilities, not because we had any indication that the water was contaminated, simply from the perspective that we were gonna release a large volume of water into their system and we did not want to overcome their system uh, with that water. Uh, in August, again, we discover the PFOS, PFOA. Uh, we immediately say no more discharges. That heightened the awareness of our airmen with regards to what the water level was in that firefighting system. Come late September, uh, a, one of our engineers goes out and recognizes that the water in the tank, so there's a tank and a pond, in the tank was lower than he expected. And he took note of it and was going to report that. Subsequently, we're preparing for a firefighter training event and we drain that tank to fill the firefighting pond that exists underneath our uh, firefighting structure. Uh, he turns that on, uh, the pump to do that, and he uh, steps away to take care of other duties. In the meantime, another engineer shows up notices that the tank is empty and again with the heightened sense of awareness of what that uh, system was doing and what the, the water contained he raised the flag the uh, pump was cavitating because uh, it had pulled all the water out and the assumption that he made is that we had drained the whole system that's where the 150,000 gallons came from so in our interest again to protect the citizenry of our community we announced that we had a potential loss of 150,000 gallons of water that had PFOS and PFOA in it. Early indications were that there was a, uh, a potential for a criminal activity involved in this. And I will tell you that no one wants to bring such an individual to justice more than me, that if someone had done this to our community, I wanted to know who it was and bring the full weight of the law against them. So we launch a independent 
criminal investigation using our Office of Special Investigations uh, in conjunction with uh, the uh, state EPA to determine what no kidding occurred. What that does then is that we can't go in and do our own investigation to determine what happened to the water. We have to wait for the criminal investigation to complete. They've roped it off, they secured it, we can't even get access to the, uh, to the facility. So that stymies our transparency. We are unable to tell you and the community what's going on. OSI is given the instructions to expedite as quickly as possible. They culminate their investigation in about four days uh, and come back and say no criminal intent. And in fact, we don't see enough evidence to suggest that the water went down the sewer. Given that, we're able to launch into our own uh, investigation to determine what happened to 150,000 gallons of water. We launch into that investigation. We review several opportunities for that water to uh, leave. One was the sewer. OSI and uh, the uh, state EPA said, no, nope, probably not that uh, culprit. We look at the possibility for overflowing our uh, firefighting pit. That uh, is not uh, an opportunity either or a culprit either, uh, as that the volume of the tank is far less than the volume of the pit. We cannot overflow that pit. Uh, we also look at uh, the uh, possibility that we have a leak so we dye all the water green and we pull water samples from under the pit and uh, monitor very closely the level of the tank and nothing moves. No green water from under the uh, pit and uh, nothing moving in the tank. Uh, so uh, we look at the uh, final potential, well, one more potential is that somebody intentionally came and pulled the water out. We look at all of the plumbing that is available to us to do that and uh, in fact, there's a beehive in one of the, uh, uh, the, one of the uh, um, plumbing uh, fixtures uh, indicating that it had not been used in quite some time. Um, the last one then is uh, the potential for evaporation. And what we do is uh, we, uh, in monitoring the level after we had put in the green dye, we noticed that in our pit, which is an extremely large uh, surface area, uh, 17,600 square feet of surface area uh, that we were seeing a quarter inch drop uh, in water every day. That is a lot. Uh, far more, yeah, thank you, there's, there's the, the, the look at the pit. Uh, and all of that gravel then is, uh, has the potential of being filled with water. So as we're uh, monitoring that, uh, we also start doing some calculations given what the weather was uh, during the time period that we saw the drop. And uh, we do uh, um, uh, continue to monitor, and between a quarter and a half inch of water is lost out of that pit every day. It's been a very dry uh, uh, fall, and uh, so we do, uh, we run the numbers, and sure enough, the two foot drop in the tank equates to what we would expect to see in the evaporation loss uh, over the course of the time that we were talking. Um, so that's how we arrive at the fact that this was evaporation. Um, so, how are we moving forward with regards to that to make sure that uh, while we had a pretty good scare, we don't have this problem in the future? We are actually plugging the drain that would get the water into the sewer. So there will be no chance of an accident or an intentional discharge into the sewer system. We are also taking the plumbing works that would uh, transport the water from the tank to that drain and we are disabling that uh, uh, plumbing works. So again, no opportunity for an accidental release in the future, no, accident, no opportunity for an intentional release in the future. We've also uh, taken a look at um, our fire trucks. So all of this uh, issue uh, comes from our AFFF firefighting foam. Um, we had fire trucks uh, until just recently that had the old legacy AFFF on board. Uh, we have uh, removed that legacy and replaced it with the uh, safer uh, AFFF foam on all of our fire trucks. That uh, was completed last week uh, and the uh, AFFF that was pulled off, uh, the Air Force Civil Engineering Center is transporting that back uh, to a central location for destruction. Um, so that's kind of where we're moving forward with our firefighting uh, and uh, that uh, um, potential release. Yes, sir. You have a question? 
No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll move then to um, uh, kind of the, uh, the more strategic view of the, uh, the contaminants uh, in the uh, uh, groundwater. Back in May, uh, as you will recall, uh, the EPA uh, reduced their standards to 70 parts per trillion on that water. Uh, we started to become aware that we may have an issue. That drove us to testing the water uh, in the uh, pit that I mentioned. Uh, and it also uh, had us take a look at some other things that, uh, you know, around the base on the uh, airport and uh, the base uh, proper on what we, uh, what we might have in terms of the PFOS, PFOA. Uh, we moved up a, uh, uh, let me back up, again our intent, public safety first. We uh, launched uh, about uh, three, I'm sorry, $4.3 million of support uh, into the uh, areas that were affected in terms of their drinking water. We, uh, about 90 locations are now getting bottled water. We have 25 homes that uh, are slated to get under uh, sink reverse osmosis systems that will pull out the PFOS, PFOA uh, to give them uh, safe drinking water. Those uh, homes are the ones that uh, are off of wells that uh, we can't, through uh, the utility companies, dilute uh, their drinking water sufficiently to get below the standard. Uh, so we're, uh, we're looking at that. We're also uh, looking at uh, a couple of mobile homes as well as a farm uh, to give a whole house uh, system uh, to uh, remove the uh, PFOS, PFOA. Uh, in the meantime, we've accelerated our uh, drilling of uh, test wells, again, in and around uh, the installation. A total of 24 wells will be used. Seven were already available to us. Uh, they just need to be refurbed for uh, use of the testing. Uh, we will drill the final 24th well on the 11th of November. We have been taking testing uh, samples from the wells as we drill. So on or about the 11th, the final test uh, sample will be taken. It will be transported to um, a contractor of the Army Corps of Engineers, so an independent study of those uh, uh, samples. Um, we expect a report sometime the summer of 17. Um, at which time, uh, with uh, the help of uh, the uh, state health uh, department, uh, we'll also work with uh, EPA, um, we will come up with a plan on remediation and what that looks like. Don't know until that report comes out what we're going to have to do to get this right. Uh, but uh, obviously you have uh, our commitment uh, as uh, community partners uh, that we will take uh, the appropriate action to get that right. Um, 